Hello. Good morning. Um, uh, Chair uh, Parks and Budget Committee members, my name is Laura Zentner, and I'm the Director of Business and Community Services, and I will be presenting the budget for fiscal year 1819 for Business and Community Services. So before I actually get into the budget, I wanted to uh, introduce our senior management team. They're not all here, but um, uh, the great services provided every day in BCS are because of this amazing team. They're professional, passionate, and results driven. So with that, if you guys could raise your hand when I call your name. Scott Archer is the INSPRD director. Lori Bothwell, I believe she's not here, but she's the county fair and event center director. Let me. Catherine Grubowski Johnson is our economic development manager. Rick Grun, parks and forest manager, ag and forest economic development manager, and property resources manager. So he wears multiple hats. Mitzi Olson, Oak Lodge library manager. Gordon Tolbert, he's the owner of Total Golf Management, and he manages our Stone Creek golf course. And then we have Greg Williams our library network manager. So the mission of business and community services is to provide economic development, public spaces, and community enrichment services to residents, businesses, visitors, and partners so they can thrive and prosper in a healthy and vibrant economy. Community, sorry. Um, this next slide is displays the dis department structure for business and community services. You can see we have seven lines of business and 20 different programs. And in the light blue, I want to note that we have two special service districts, that's North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District and the Library District of Clackamas County. Um, INSPRD has a budget of about 46 million and the Library District's about 20 million. And those budgets will be next week. The budget that you um, will hear today uh, is about 33 million, but overall the budget is a 101 million for all of our divisions, 20 full-time FTE, and we have 150 plus temp and seasonal staff. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. We have some budget meetings next week also happening. This next slide um, displays our budget over the last four years, and you can see it's ranging between 34, 33 million over, the, over several years. We have very limited general fund support, 2.6 million. Um, so this is a good point for me to talk about how we're funded. I kind of want to go through that because we're not general funded, so we really have to monitor our revenues and expenses. Most of our funds are very restricted and they can't be used in other, in other divisions of BCS. So economic development and our forest ag economic development is supported by lottery funds. So those are restricted by Oregon statute for economic development. Our Oak Lodge library is supported by, by a library district distribution. Um, and again, those are dedicated funds specifically for libraries. Stone Creek Golf Course is supported by green fees. This is one of our programs that actually, actually generates a net profit of about $600,000 annually, which helps to support our county parks programs. Our county pro parks program is one of the most diversified um, as far as funding. And we have RV fees, we have camping fees, we uh, own the Boone's Ferry Marina, which generates about $100,000, which helps to support county parks. We have that transfer from Stone Creek Golf Course to help support county parks. And then also we have timber revenue from our harvest that we do on an annual basis. And then there's a real small general fund support that helps county parks. Um, and then we have our forest and timber program, which of course is supported by our annual timber harvest. And our county fair is supported by the fees and charges that they charge for the fair, the rodeo, and then all the events that happen there throughout the year. And then finally, we have our library network, and they are 100% funded by the general fund of Clackamas County. So that's our only program or division that is uh, funded, and that's the majority of that 2.6 million in that yellow line that you see on the graph there. This next slide, what I, what I did is, 
I removed the beginning balance and the reserve and the ending fund balance because I think it's really important to show you are we balancing our revenues and expenditures when you take out the beginning and ending balances. And you can see um, in blue, we actually are spending more than we're bringing in, but that's on purpose, intentional, because we're spending our reserves that we have set aside for capital asset repair and replacement. And I'll talk about that um, in a minute. Um, I want to pass out some financial guidelines that we use to monitor and manage all of our BCS divisions. Um, our goal is long-term sustainable operations, taking care of what we have. We really believe in taking care of our assets and setting aside dollars to make sure we do that, and then prudently using our taxpayer dollars. So the first thing we do is we do quarterly reporting and five-year forecasting for all of our um, divisions in BCS. That keeps us in compliance with budget law, and it gives our managers advanced indicators of any potential shortfalls and expenditure overages that we're going to have. The other thing that we do is we always balance our ongoing revenues and ongoing expenses. Again, we don't want to use our beginning balance to pay for an ongoing expense. So we recognize our beginning balance as a one-time revenue that should only be used for a one-time expense. And then we have a reserve guideline where we set aside between 10 and 15 percent for contingency and or emergency things that happen during those and those are things that happen during the year that are unanticipated that you couldn't have known about at the time that you prepared the budget and then finally and probably most important is we have our capital As asset management program and what we do here is we inventory all of our assets we systematically set aside dollars every single year to make sure we can pay for the repair and the replacement of our capital assets and just for example, if you had a $50,000 truck and it had a five-year life, you would set aside $10,000 a year so that at the, at the end of the life, when that truck needed to be replaced, you would have the dollars available to do that. So in the graphs that you see, that is why the expenditures are higher because those are the reserves that we've set aside that we're using. The next slide is a roll-up of um, all of our revenues and expenditures, revenues in green, expenditures in blue. And, and again, you can see uh, we have a large fund balance on the revenue side, and we have lar large reserve and contingencies on the uh, expenditure side, and that is, be again, because we're prudently setting aside dollars to make sure we can take care of our assets. On the other, in, on the other category, that's 23% for the revenues. That is um, timber revenue of 1.2 million that we have projected in our budget, plus a $4.5 bond sell in the event that we buy some additional um, timber land. And then there's fair rents and rodeo sponsorships in there, and then library reimbursements. In the charges for service line item, that's mostly fair revenue, green fees from Stone Creek Golf Course, car county parks fees, and such. And then the state portion that you see, that's the 9%. That's the lottery funds that pays for our economic development that I mentioned. And then the local amount there is the Oak Lodge Library distribution. And then on the expenditure side, we just have our typical expenditures. We have personal services at 19%, which pays for our staff. And then we have material and services at 30%, which pays for um, our operations and what we need for that. And then on the capital side, we have 20% as far as the expenditures go. And just to mention a couple of the projects we have, we have um, bathroom replacements at Barton, Briar, and Metzler Parks, as well as a replacement of the Heb Dock. And we have the $4.5 million potential land purchase for a timber program, which really bumps up that number. And then we have a fair, a fair roof repla replacement of the main pavilion at, at our fair and event center. So that just gives you a, a quick overview of some of the revenues and expenditures. Uh, with regards to our FTE, we have 36 FTE. We are proposing increasing that to 37, and that is for a project manager to manage the master plan and construction of two libraries. We have one in the Oak Lodge area that's proposed to be 19,500 square feet, and then one in Gladstone that would be 16. 
or around 16, 6,000 square feet. So that's the increase in the FTE. And this next slide displays all of our lines of business. We have six lines of business. I'm not going to describe what they all are until um, the next slide. But And then we have the 15 programs. So you can see we have assets, BCS administration, fair and event center, economic development, library, and parks, golf, and recreation. Um, so on the next, I think, six slides, they are the performance measures. And rather than trying to do all the performance measures, because we have a lot, um, I'm only going to focus on one for each line of business. And when I talk about each of the lines of business, I'll try to talk about the programs within that line of business and give you some information that might not be in your budget document. So the first is BCS administration. And the two programs there are Office of the Director and then Budgeting, Financial Management, and Planning. And this uh, is, we provide leadership, direction, communication, budgeting, and financial management support to the divisions within BCS. Um, so what we like to say is that we provide that internal support so that our external um, service providers and programs can provide um, that service while we're taking care of all those inter internal things like HR, risk, procurement, budget, and finance. Um, the performance measure that we have listed here is the percentage of quarterly reports completed within 45 days after year end. And you can see we do a really good job with that. And one of the things that this is, that performance Clackamas has really helped us with here is because we're monitoring our revenues and expenditures so closely, so closely, um, it's improved our awareness of capital asset repair and replacement and when we need to set aside dollars, or maybe even when we don't. That we see an asset that um, we thought maybe would um, have a short life, but it has a longer life than we thought, so we can adjust accordingly. So that's one of the areas that that has helped. The next uh, line of business is County Fair and Event Center. Um, so we have two programs here. We have the County Fair and Rodeo, and then the County Event Center. And the Fair and Rodeo is going to be having its 112th fair in August. Um, and the, they account for the general operations, facility maintenance, and capital needs for the annual County Fair and Rodeo. And their theme this year is Grow It, Sew It, and Show It. So it's kind of cute. cute. Um, and then, so the rest of the year, so the fair is five days a year, but the rest of the year they hold about 780 other activities um, on the 49-acre fair premises. And um, that includes meetings, parties, parties, weddings, and fundraisers. And one thing I did uh, want to mention about the fair and event center is they currently, the revenues that are generated out there only pay for operations. And so we're working on a strategic a master plan and a business plan to hope, hopefully be able to pay for repair and replacement in the future. So that's one important thing to note here. The performance measure here that, we, um, that I highlighted is the percentage of capacity of rodeo attendance. And you can see we're at 86% capacity. We had 20,000 people attend the rodeo. And one of the things that Performance Clackamas has really helped with is really looking at the rodeo and then breaking it down in between midweek attendance and then um, peak attendance, would be, which would, would be Friday and Saturday. And how do you adjust your pricing and your packages accordingly? So that's really helped us, where you can uh, bump up your prices like a hotel would on Friday and Saturday, potentially offer some discounts midweek. So Performance Clackamas has helped us to hone in on that. <coughs> um, the next line of business is economic development. Or not economic development, but yeah, it is economic development. And we have um, three different programs. One is economic development, one is economic opportunity, and then we have ag and forest economic development. So the goal of economic development is to create living wage jobs in Clackamas County through programs that are related to business retention, expansion, relocation of established businesses, recruitment of new businesses, as well as business assistance. 
And then we have the Opportunity Program, which um, that's where we fund sponsors to explore or introduce a project with the, the potential for a positive impact um, on the economic vitality in the county. And some examples of what we've done there is funding for the Willamette Locks, funding for the Willamette Falls Legacy Project, funding for the, a veteran scholarship program. Those are just a couple of the examples of what we do with those dollars. And then finally, our forest and ag program, um, we provide support to the ag and forest industry in the county and then also support legislation that will enable sustainable harvests on our or Oregon and California timberlands. So the um, measure here is the number of new jobs created and private dollars invested from enterprise zone applicants. And you can see in 1718, we're projecting 55 jobs about 29.6 million. And one of the things that we're doing here because of Performance Clackamas is we've really, we're looking at our marketing and how do we market the businesses that are already in the enterprise zone potentially to make sure they're aware of those, the benefits of the enterprise zone as well as outreach to smaller startup businesses that are not in the zone to, to pot potentially have them relocate into the enterprise zone. So. That is economic development. How am I doing time-wise? I have a timer going, so that I'm, so I'm 16 minutes in. Um, library is our next line of business. And we have three programs here. We have library systems, shared library services, and the two of those together make up what we call our library network of Clackamas County. And we, then we have our Oak Lodge Library. So Library Systems provides centralized hardware, software, cataloging, and technical support services to our 11 city libraries and one county library. And then we have Shared Library Services that focuses on the delivery, de delivery of centralized materials, handling, courier services, cataloging, and administrative support. So again, those two make up the library um, network of Clackamas County. Um, and then we have our Oak Lodge Library, which provides and promotes, promotes informational, educational, cultural, and recreational materials to enhance the economic, social, and cultural vitality of the community. Um, so one of the big projects that we've recently implemented here is the RFID project. And I, I think if I recall right, Greg said that we tagged over a million books with our radio frequency ID tags. And that's really helped with efficiency in our libraries. And so the um, performance measure here is that we're looking at is the percentage of scheduled courier stops made within the established timeframes. And you can see we're currying close to 2 million pick pickups and deliveries um, on an annual basis. And uh, one of the things is that we've, the library staff is now spending less time handling materials and more time engaging directly with patrons because of the RFID implementation. And then um, city county staff have been able to free up and repurpose space in their circulation areas. areas. And then the courier routes are um, completed faster with significantly less labor required to load, transport, and deliver materials. And just an interesting note for you guys, the couriers travel about 50 miles thousand miles annually, which is two times around the globe. What, say that one more time. 50,000 miles annually, wow. and that's about two times around the globe. Wow. So that's tr transporting two million books. Okay. <laughs> the next uh, line of business is parks, and this includes the Stone Creek Golf Course and County Parks. So the Stone Creek Golf Course, I um, just want to tell you a little bit about that. It's a Peter Jacobson, Jim Hardy design course with views of spectacular views of Mount Hood. It's an International Audubon Sanctuary certified. The golf course is laid out over 120 acres with old growth Douglas firs, lakes, and four wetlands. It has 43 bunkers. And, and, we, and we contract with um, Gordon Tolbert, owner of Total Golf Management, to provide all the uh, manage operations and maintain maintenance for the golf course. So again, they um, generate a net profit of over $600,000 a 
which a portion of that goes to repair and replace any assets that are out there, and a portion uh, also goes to support our county park system. So speaking of county park system, we have 19 park sites in rural Clackamas County, and our facilities include 201 campsites, 13 restrooms, eight caretaker facilities, a 96 slip boat marina, that's the Boone's Ferry Marina, seven boat launches, 1,000 acres of parklands, of which 180 are mowed turf, five natural area parks with river access and several miles of hiking trails. And some of the big projects that we've recently done because of our capital asset management program that we have is we've replaced all the playground equipment at Barton, Fryer, and Metzler Parks. And we're currently working on replacing the bathroom at those same facilities. And um, we've re reduced our deferred maintenance at, from $4 million to down, down to $2 million. So we're really proud of that. And Rick Gruen and his team has <laughs> done an amazing job yeah. on that. Actually. And the measure that I wanted to highlight here is the peak rate occupancy in our campsites as well as off-peak. And one of the things that Clackamas, um, Performance Clackamas has really assisted with is breaking down again that week and looking at midweek versus the weekend and, and tailoring our staffing and services accordingly. So I wanted to highlight that. And then we have assets as our next line of business. And this includes our forest and timber management program, property resources, and tax title land. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but Clackamas County is 1.2 million acres, and 80% of that is forest. 51% is US Forest Service and BLM land. Clackamas County owns and manages 3,200 acres of forest. And we have a goal of um, having healthy forests that produce timber on a sustainable level, protect our natural resources, and contribute to jobs in rural communities. We currently harvest about 40 acres annually on a 55 to 65 year rotation. That generates about um, five to $600,000 annually, which helps with our capital asset repair and replace and our county parks program. Each harvest is about 1.4 million board feet which, um, so, so that you can visualize that, it's 14 train cars full of lumber is about what that is. And um, the board recently approved an expansive, expansion of our timber program to allow for the purchase of 2,500 additional acres. So you'll see in the budget we have um, a, a bond sale and then a land purchase line item. Okay, now, then I just, now I just wanted to highlight a couple of the emerging issues. We are um, in partnership with PGA and HRS. We're gonna be hiring a full-time position to support both departments with communication, me media relations, marketing, and, and community relations. So we're really excited about that. Uh, the FAIR board, I think I mentioned this, but I'll just mention it again real quick. They've hired LRS architects. They're developing a master plan as well as a business plan. And again, the goal there is just to help the FAIR generate additional revenue to uh, be able to pay for the repair and replace of their assets in addition to their, their ongoing operations. That's one of the goals. The next item is that I wanted to highlight is um, in 2015, the legislature passed a House bill which allowed for the formation of something called a land bank authority, and we are working on forming a land bank authority. And what it will do, is, if we can get it formed, it will allow the entity to take in brownfields without the liabilities that are norm normally associated um, with brownfields. So the goal there is going to be to be able to increase our employment lands in Clackamas County. And our cross-laminated timber initiative, you've heard a little bit about that. Um, this is a, a big priority for the Board of County Commissioners. And what we're looking for there, looking at there is we're focusing on three areas, supply, building codes, and investment. And on the supply side, we want to open up the federal forest to be able to use timber for CLT projects. 
And then on the building codes, we want to streamline the building code process to move CLT projects through the permitting process efficiently once that starts. And then on the investment side, we're looking at creating a package uh, for an investor uh, to retrofit a current mill or build a new mill in Clackamas County for CLT processing. And then some of the investment um, ideas that we're looking at are new market tax credits, enterprise zones, opportunity zones, but, and that's something that we're working on now. And if you have more questions about that, uh, Rick Bruin is here to answer questions on that. And let's see what else. I'm just about to the end, so you'll have time for questions. The uh, next uh, project that I just wanted to highlight is the build. Um, we have a settled agreement with the city of Gladstone, and so therefore we're going to be building two libraries, one in Oak Lodge area, one in the Gladstone area. Um, so we're really excited about that. We currently have the project manager position out on the street, and so we're hoping to get a, a great person to manage and assist us with that. And... See what else I have. I think I mentioned this, but the board in February of 2018 authorized um, us to purchase an additional 2,500 acres to expand our current timber program where we're managing 3,200 acres. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. And Thank you. Let's see if I'm I'm start ready. with Commissioner Humberston. Thank you, Madam Chair. That was 26 minutes. You <laughs> did good. <laughs> I have a few comments and a couple of questions. So, okay. uh, first, I really like the fact that you put in here it shall be the goal of the county not to defer maintenance of infrastructure. Um, putting that straight up in language like that makes it a focus, and I think long term that's a very important focus because there is a tendency in government agencies to um, sacrifice the maintenance of infrastructure in tight times, and the end result is it usually costs you more, not less. Yeah. So, I appreciate that very much. Um, I want to personally thank you for your assistance in helping to develop the um, a memorandum of understanding between this board and the fair board. Uh, it was um, a long labor, but we got there. <laughs> so I really want to thank you for that. Um, I would like to note that the uh, Forest Advisory Board made some changes uh, in, in their plan uh, in reflection on uh, community concerns. Uh, for in, and one of those things, for instance, is there will be notification of the general public in areas when land sales occur, not just when timber sales occur. Uh, so people can have the opportunity to speak to uh, what happens in those land sales and what might be done with the land after it's sold. Um, I want to thank you again for the funding for veteran scholarships uh, in conjunction with the Small Business Development Center at Clackamas Community College. I think that's a, 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 an investment that will bode well for the county long term. Um, can we buy more golf courses? It's my first question. If you're making six hundred thousand dollars a year. That's <laughs> think seems like a pretty good investment. Yeah, it's something we're definitely <laughs> looking into and have thought about. Okay. <laughs> um, you had indicated that you uh, have proposed a uh, one full-time employee for the for. Uh, um, Library. The library planning for Gladstone. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, yeah, and I guess for for both or for just Gladstone is my first. It's, question. it's for both. It's, it's to manage both. not only um, the two the build of the two libraries, but also the master planning of the Concord site. Um, NCPRD recently uh, finalized a strategic partners partnership with the school district, and they acquired three elementary schools, and that was one of the sites. And we're looking at potential of having the Oak Lodge Library be located at that site. So they will manage all of that. It's, so it's a pretty big project. So if you're hiring someone to help to develop the planning for these two projects, is that a permanent hire? No, it's a limited term, um, two-year position. We believe, though, that the project um, pro will probably take three years. So we're thinking 2021 before we're actually done, and we want them on board. So what we'll do is we'll extend it a year if we need to. Okay. And then finally, um, we have a number of initiatives, some of which uh, impact our, uh, the staff that assist us as well as uh, economic development. And they, re they, they tend to revolve around being able to respond quickly to requests, for instance, to host Chinese delegations who come in looking for business opportunities. Um, and it's impacted our, our, uh, our staff quite a bit. 
Um, we obviously are working on, on other initiatives besides just that, the CLT and, and, um, and those kinds of things. Uh, are, are we adequately staffed to, to respond to those kinds of um, last minute requests, I guess, for lack of a better term? Because um, so, it's been, I know it's been burdensome for our staff. They have responded and responded well, but you know, it's not the only thing they have to do. And I want to make sure we, we're able to respond to these kinds of, of um, uh, business requests. Um, so. so far, we've been able to handle the requests that have come in. However, what we're doing with uh, regards to the Chinese um, delegations and, and that relationship is we've hired a consultant to do an international investment strategy, which will put some sidebars around what we're able to offer these delegations and how many we can host. So it will give us a budget and again some parameters because we don't have unlimited staff to host the delegations every time they come. Mm. So we'll we'll definitely work on that and um, okay. let you know what those sidebars are once we have the the I, plan. I think that was that's all I had. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank Thanks. you very much. Um, Frank Magdalene. One, I want to applaud you for the, uh, I'll call it optimization of assets or off-peak uh, <laughs> pricing. I think it's great. As a, a follow-on to uh, Ken Hubbardson's comment about the FTE coming in um, for the planning and the construction of the library, is there is there an employee in facilities management or something? in the county that could also do that? Um, we've opened up the position and I, I mean, I don't, I believe it's a different skill set than what we have in facilities management because you're going to be dealing with um, a lot of public processes, a lot of public meetings, and I don't believe that they, that their skill set would fall into what we need. But Don can help. Yeah, I was just going to. I was just going to say it. I can echo uh, Laura's comments with respect to that. We do have project management capabilities on our facilities team, but what's unique about uh, the project with regard to the libraries and also the master planning for the Concord, which is sort of above and beyond what our facilities folks normally do, is the community engagement effort that that will require. And so we really do need, I think, a special skill set here to carry that out. I can't hear you. Okay. I'm sorry. Just a follow. As a project management professional, PMP, and I understand there's a, there's a change management component as well as the project management element of that. So that's an important different skill set. I could see it. it takes some time to get that right skill set. It makes good sense. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Feely. Thank you. Um, I just have one question. The performance measure for the county fair, the attendance. You're. It's quite an aggressive increase from attendance in 16, 17. What page are you on? I'm a, well, I'm actually on page 12 of the budget. Do you have that? Yep, I Okay. Do. So the top um, performance measurement there, percentage of capacity of county fair attendance. Last year was 65, and you're looking at 86 this year and 89 next year. So I was just wondering what are the elements of change that you're looking at to make that happen? Um... Basically, the attendance is very, very weather dependent, to, that was, be, <laughs> to be honest, with the fair. So it was and 16, so 17, an anomaly? It was, oh, we okay. had, I think it was, it was really hot. hot. Oh, all right. And so, I mean. Attendance goes can, down in the heat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can do all the promoting and everything that you want, but if the weather's yeah, really, okay. really hot, it's what not, Oregonians Well, that's why I wondered hot, if that it. was an anomaly or, okay, I'm good, thanks. Yeah. And Ms. Caldwell. Thank you. I have two questions. Uh -huh. um, the first one is your um, performance measure on page 18, the first one for economic development. Uh -huh. um, I'm looking at the $29.6 million um, of private dollars invested from the Enterprise Zone applicants. Mm -hmm. That's a big um, jump, and I'm just wondering if that was a particular thing, or was that just the economy in general that brought several things in? Was it? I know we had, it says that we've had three Enterprise Zone applications processed, so, but I'll have Catherine Grubowski-Johnson come up and answer that. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> Good morning. Catherine Grabowski Johnson, Manager of Economic Development. Uh, what makes the, the numbers both difficult to uh, look at when it comes to enterprise zone and to forecast is a variety of things and that is the way that we deal with businesses. So a business may come in and apply for an enterprise zone, we meet with them. It may be that year that they actually apply and we look at, okay, they're going to invest $5 million. Then they may go back and say, you know, while we're doing this, we would like additional equipment or additional uh, uh, building improvements and may add $10 million. So a lot of this fluctuates with the economy. This happened to be a couple of businesses who decided that they were going to take that investment jump and increase both their building and their equipment. Sometimes the jobs go up with that. Sometimes with automation, the jobs stay level. There is a requirement of 10% job increase for Was each. It a particular area of the economy that you saw that growth or? It was in general manufacturing okay. that we have seen a growth and as we, as we have been uh, watching the trends in our manufacturing throughout the county, when the recession hit, everyone put the brakes on and when the recession uh, started to subside and the businesses started looking at growth, there was still a couple of years where businesses had the money to invest but were a little bit slower in taking that leap and then all of a sudden they said, okay, we've got to do this. And so then when we go in, our staff, Cindy Knudsen, manages our enterprise zone. And when she meets with the business, then they start looking at the benefits of the enterprise zone, say, okay, we should add this piece of equipment as well. So it's uh, general manufacturing is where we're seeing the largest amount of growth. Thank you. And I do have a second question, if I may. Um, in the tax title land sales program, are there mm -hmm. proceeds from sales of property? Yes, we do have proceeds from the sale of the properties. And where do those proceeds go? How so are they um, currently they pay for the, the program that we run. We are not general funded, so it pays for the staffing and, and, and the work related to that. In addition to that, because there's the potential that we could take on a brown field or a contaminated site, we do have a, a reserve that we are trying to build up in the event that we take on a brown field because we would have to clean it up. And so, and then after that, if once those are all full, the reserve for that is full, then what you do is you distribute the dollars to all the taxing entities within Clackamas County because those dollars are actually coming and those properties are coming from throughout Clackamas County. And we will be doing a distribution, not this fiscal year, but in 1819. Thank you. That was my question. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank you. If there are no other questions, we thank you very much thank for you. your presentation and um, also the fact that between your presentation and the questions from here, we got us back on track time-wise. So thank you. I'm glad I could do that. Oh, thank you.